الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا ما بعد ميدي برسن سسترز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we are going to discuss a very important and a very relevant part of the Quran as far as the next two or three or four weeks are concerned which is titled Sabbath Breakers and You and most of you here would already know uh, what the Sabbath Breakers and the incident that involves the Sabbath Breakers it appears in Surah Araf, Surah number 7, Ayat number 163 to 165. Just these three verses that describe the incident of the Sabbath breakers. So there are how many groups in this incident? Can anybody tell me how many groups? Three groups. Okay, three groups. Okay, the group one, they are the group that broke the Sabbath. So what does it mean to break the Sabbath? Sabbath is Saturday. So they were given a commandment not to work on a Saturday. And this, this was a fishing community. So they used to fish, right? And, you know, sell the fish for their living. On Saturday, they were not supposed to fish. So Allah tested them in this commandment. And they were not able to get adequate amount of fish during the other days, right? And you know, apart from Saturday, on the other days, they did not get adequate amount of fish. The fish used to come only on the Saturday. So they were very tempted. So what did they do? They broke the Sabbath. They were not supposed to go and fish on a Saturday, but they went ahead and started fishing on that Saturday. Okay, this is the first group that broke. The second group, they did not break the Sabbath, but they were silent spectators. They were bystanders. They didn't do anything. They just watched the group one breaking the Sabbath. They didn't do anything. They just kept quiet. And there is a third group. This group, when they watched the group one breaking the Sabbath, they went and they tried to stop the evil deed. They said, don't do this. This is not correct. You are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will get punished for this. Right? They tried to do this. Now, as far as today's discussion is concerned, we are not worried about group one. Group one, they are open disobedience. They broke the Sabbath. They disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will leave them alone. Discussion today will be around group two and group three. The bystanders, they did not break the Sabbath themselves, right? In terms of observing the Sabbath, they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they remained silent spectators. They were bystanders. So that group versus group number three, who obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and followed the Sabbath and also tried to stop the evil deed. Okay, let's discuss. Group two. The first question is, why did group two become bystanders? There must be some reason, right? Because they understood the seriousness of Sabbath. Yeah, so that is why they did not break it, right? They obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they had the respect that is to be given to Allah's hukum, right? They, they understood that. That's why they did not break the law. But why did they choose to remain bystanders? It's actually a choice, right? Does anybody know? Why did they choose to become bystanders? What was their, they gave actually, they gave a reasoning, right? They said, why? They, they are bystanders. Yeah. Because they felt that Allah will uh, ultimately punish them in the Akira. Okay. And I think th that was one of the reasons. Okay. Right. They don't and, care for others. Hmm? Sorry? They don't, they don't care for others. They okay. become selfish. They become selfish. Okay. They are thinking uh, they are not doing anything. So that kind of. Okay, so the question is, right, when we ask these questions, right, does Allah mention their reasoning? What are the three ayat I told you? No, no, it's not mentioned. It's not mentioned? Seriously? <laughs> what are the three ayat? Let's see Let's see if it is mentioned or not. What are the three three verses in Surah Araf? 163? Three. Huh, 164, then 164, 165. Okay, let's go to 164. Okay. So basically, they're saying when a party of them said the group three is talking to group two. Uh, sorry, uh, group two is talking to group three. Group three, the bystanders are talking to group three. Why do you admonish the people who are going to be, you know, punished with a severe punishment? Right. So what is the what is the point? You know, anyways, you know, Allah is going to be uh, punishing them severely. 
ஒன்னும்ஸ் The, for the bystanders that sabat breakers are hardcore sinners right and i mean these people are beyond uh, you know they're say incorrigible right these people are uh, uh, beyond anything right beyond reformation they're not going to reform right they're not going to change themselves right for the hardcore sinners gone and they will not listen to any advice because anyways allah is going to punish them then what's the point right they're not going to listen to anybody so why do we even need to give an advice to them and they will be punished right so what is that we learn although on the face of it right it's actually a very small part of the aya the reasoning the rational given by the bystanders is a very small uh, part of the aya but it has got deep extremely deep learnings and lessons for us so this is actually a mindset the mindset can be summarized in this in this single slide trying to stop evil is of no use remember this i want you to write this down now huh? and i will show you know next slide will be the uh, practical implications and each of us right including me at some degree we are affected with this problem trying to stop evil is of no use this is the mindset okay write this down so what are the practical implications i'll give some examples if i boycott mcdonald's will israel stop the war same mindset right i don't eat a burger mcdonald's burger what will happen huh? i don't eat the burger pa i'm asking you right i don't eat the mcdonald's burger do you think israel will stop the war do you think israel economy will go to one burger ji just one burger one mac d huh? what what is what is you know what difference is it going to make and by the way i'm not making this up on people actually they have made this arguments in one of the whatsapp group that i'm part of there is an activist at least you know well known activist and he mentions this in the group right you know how many times you know, how many years have you been boycotting what is the result so stopping evil if it is of no use they will not do do we see this mindset do have you heard this argument right one burger what difference will it make Which, i have what? heard the argument yes, and husband right? wife together both husband wife uh, wife the opinion is totally different she boycotted and husband told that what will happen only one ah. thing tere ek karne se kya kuch hone wala hai kuch nahi hone wala hai khalo khalo ha bilkul right what will happen huh? what is the big deal as if you know this one burger is going to change everything huh? even if all the muslims they come together and they decide that they will not eat mcdonald's burger what difference will it make right so on and so forth okay this is one okay you will see that number two i did so many duas did palestinians get victory i have been doing dua in tahajjud what is the point kitna dua kiya mai huh aapko malum people come with the right either they explicitly say it or at least in their mind they think Uh, how many times you are done uh, how many retweets you are doing uh, we have been retweeting reposting sharing video and status doing that doing very right? right this absolutely no it doesn't make any difference right we don't see any change right in extension what will change because of my single vote hmm? same thing right are yaar yeah okay i'm not going to vote oh what ek vote mein kya fark padta hai what is the difference you think because of me uh, the fascism will go away because of my one word do you think things will change hmm? now these are i just given some examples right i can go on and on and on same mindset of the bystanders that allah subhanahu wa taala mentions in surah araf same mindset absolutely nothing different i give i given three examples right now let's keep the same mindset and let's go back to the sira and let's see if this mindset is welcome or not right i'm not even taking the sabbath breakers right leave the sabbath breakers alone i'm directly jumping that's it we will not come back to the sabbath breakers now you know no, because we already discussed it in one of the previous sessions i'm not going to go back there let's go back to the sira and let's see if this mindset of saying you know it is no use kya fark padta hai right this attitude if allah subhanahu wa taala welcomes this attitude or you know how seriously allah subhanahu wa taala looks at it let me ask you how many people participated in the battle of tabuk 
no, battle of tabuk right that was one of the last battles that was uh, that where uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was the commander sallallahu alaihi wasallam right so can anybody tell me how many people participated approximately give me an idea din so 11000 din so how many 30000 of them 11000 yeah 30000 jazakumullah khair 30000 people participated approximately 30 30000 people okay how do 30000 people three people sahaba ralilan majmuin they stayed back they didn't participate they wanted to go for whatever reason they were not able to join three people and if you look at the percentage it is 0.01% percent. Hmm? look not even 0.1% it is 0.01% percent. no now let's use the, our rational right the rational that we use एक बर्गर में क्या फर्क पड़ता है एक वोट में क्या फर्क पड़ता है एक रीट्वीट में क्या फर्क पड़ता है फॉर दोस पीपल वी आर गोइंग आस्ट दिस क्वेश्चन व्हाट इंपैक्ट विल दिस थ्री पीपल मेक टू द विक्ट्री और द डिफीट कैन एनीबॉडी टेल मी विद थ्री पीपल इफ दे जॉइन इज देयर इज द विक्ट्री गारंटीड विल दे मेक सच अ बिग इंपैक्ट दैट देयर विल बी विक्ट्री व्हाट डू यू थिंक कुड बी नो कुड बी No, no. 100 percent, we can say no. You know why? You cannot say could be. 30,000 people and three people. And today we are not talking about the cyber warfare and all that. You know, we are talking about the ancient warfare, right? Where it's very primitive. Today, at least you can say, you know, one guy, a cyber genius, can do something. Yeah. Today it might be different. That one guy might make the big difference. But back then, I mean, it's just numbers, just number game. So three people, the impact they would have had on the victory or defeat is absolutely. I mean, you you can discount that. just because these three people joined victory is not guaranteed and just because these three people did not join it doesn't mean that the army will lose so in terms of impact in terms of outcome in terms of result it doesn't make a difference agree or no does anybody have a different opinion here do you agree with me these three people joining or not joining is not going to influence the outcome yes or no yes yes bhai yes absolutely yes, right ha You see, right? So the obvious conclusion is, yeah, fark padta hai, huh? Right? Correct, right? That should be the thing. Thirty thousand people went, three people, and that too they had some excuse. It's not like they were not hypocrites. Hypocrites also didn't go, but these are not hypocrites, huh? These are Sahaba, and one of the Sahaba we all will know. No, we know the entire incident from that hadith, long hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Kaab ibn Malik radhi Allahu anhu was one of the Sahaba who, who took shahada in uh, Laylatul Aqaba. Right? It's a very special team. From Medina, that went and met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Valley of Akaba. Right, he was one of them. Ah, huh? very distinguished Sahabi, Rali Lan. He was one of them. So these are not some ordinary people, right? But if you look at it, right, the mathematics tells us 0.01 percent. Arey, yar, negligible. Ah, chord do. Ham chord deenge, boy. Allah nahi chord de. Look at this. Allah sent an ayat. Right, ayat number 118. in surah tauba allah punished them what is the punishment the punishment was social boycott social boycott to the extent that people were not even returning salams that was the extent of social boycott imagine that and one of the sahabi he became bedridden because of the grief completely bedridden so much so his wife uh, rali lanha he she went to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she asked for permission my husband is completely bedridden right so should i stay with him or you know or should i leave because there was a command that you know the wife should not stay with the husband yeah and kaab ibn malik rali lan he sent his wife right so this is you know the other sahabi's wife he she goes and he seeks permission from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam can i you know do khidmat to my husband because he's completely bedridden look at the grief social boycott right so, who i'm not exaggerating and allah subhanahu wa taala mentions how difficult the situation was for the the three sahaba to the point that the earth despite despite its its vastness seemed to close in on them hmm? because madina if you look at madina right it's such a you know huge city but it looked nobody is talking nobody is even returning salam even the wife cannot stay with you you're completely isolated so it became very constricted and their souls were torn in anguish they had so much of grief and pain who is saying that not me it's allah subhanahu wa taala who says that right and they knew there was no refuge from allah except in him then he turned to them in mercy so that they might repent allah took it so serious he put them in a situation where they had to suffer 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed his mercy and he accepted their repentance because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surely Allah, he alone is the acceptor of repentance, the most merciful. What is the learning here? This mindset of saying, kya farak padta hai? Ye burger, ye burger mein kya hota hai? What difference will it make? This attitude is hated, is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please remember this. Right? For other things, right? Wherever it suits us, we will take. Ah, oh, when Allah says this, Allah says that. This is also a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah hates this. Right? He did not, Allah Rabbul Alamin did not say, okay, chodda, right? They came and asked for forgiveness, right? Allah could have directly forgiven them. Why did he punish them? Why the social boycott? He could have directly, you know, because it is sincere repentance, right? Kaab ibn Malik Ralilan, if you read the long hadith, he says that, I am very eloquent. Right? I am very eloquent. If it was any other person, I would have convinced them with excuses. But no, not in front of you, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't give excuses. So, you know, he said, yeah, I made a mistake. I wanted to come, you know, and he is explaining. Right? You know, I had this uh, orchard, right? You know, the grapes and all the dates and all that, right? I thought I'll come tomorrow, I'll come tomorrow, and it never happened. He was very honest. Right? So, you know, honesty, sincere repentance, and Allah should have just forgiven them. Okay, go. Chalo. No. Because Allah wanted to teach a lesson for all the believers till the day of judgment. This attitude of saying, you know, you know, I will, you know, I will, I will stay behind. Uh, Array, what difference will it make? Even if I don't go, it's okay. Uh, I had my some some reason. I had a headache. Uh, I had this work to do. I had that work to do. These are not accepted. These are not valid excuses. Everybody who is a believer, has got a duty to do. They have got a responsibility. You have to do. If you don't do, there will be consequences. Either in this dunya or in the year after. Or both. You will face the consequences in this dunya and you will face the consequences in the akhra. You have to be ready for that. No excuses will be accepted. You see? So it's a very, very serious thing. So this mindset, get out of that mindset. I don't know what you, you, know, what you were thinking before. From now onwards, till you die, if you're not doing it, say that I'm doing wrong. Finish. I'm supposed to boycott. I'm not boycotting. Yes, I'm making a mistake. But don't ever say that, you know, Yek burger mein kya farak padta hai? Then you have to remember this incident of Tabuk. Right? These three people, you know, what difference will it make? It will not make any difference. But it, it, nothing, the, whether it makes a difference or not, is out of question here. Allah Rabbul Alamin doesn't see like that. You were supposed to join. Did you join? You were supposed to do this. Did you do? When you clearly know that a portion of the Prophet is going to the Zionists and they are killing your brothers and sisters. Right? How can you eat a burger? If, if let's say, you know, the same McDonald's is killing this the person who is eating the burger, his father and mother, will he still eat the burger? burger Right? Will he say that? Will the same McDonald's is sponsoring to kill his own children? Will he still go to the same stall and will he eat the burger? You see? When it comes to them, it's a different stand. But when it comes to others, it's a different stand. Right? Subhanallah. So this attitude is completely unwelcome in Islam. Right? So remember this. Any questions so far? Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay. Now this is group. Okay. This is group two. Now let's come to group three. So group 3, can anybody remind me, what is that group 3? What did they do? Group 2, bystanders, silent spectators. Group 3? They who tried to that? stop the evil deed. Yes, who tried to stop the evil deed. The question is, why would they stop evil? Right, because, you know, these people are also there only, right? But when, I mean, they could have also given some excuse. Kya farak padta hai? What is the use? These people are gone. Huh? No use. Right? So this is something that, you know, we see in the same ayat, right? Same ayat, 164. It gives the conversation between group 2 and group 3. Right? So first of all, they had concern. They had concern. Right? They had concern for the people. Right? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya'iduna. Ya'iduna is to give an advice from heart. With a lot of sincerity. Right? Because the, the question itself is like that. Right? You look at 164. They ask. Why are you advising? Huh? 
Why are you advising these people? And Wada, if you remember, to give a simple example, Rukman alayhi salam, he gave advice, he gave nasiha to his son, right, in Surah 31. Right, you go read that, same verb is used, Wada. So you imagine, like how a father advises his son with love, with care, with concern. Same way, these people, the group number three, they advised the Sabbath breakers. So imagine, right? If you look at uh, Surah Lukman, ayat number 13. Allah says, while he was advising him, right? Ya Bunaya, and it, you know, it continues. So this is not some kind of random advice. This is an advice that has got a lot of concern. Same way, these people, they had concern. This is number one. Right? Why are they doing what they are doing? Because they have concern. They are not selfish people. Why do some people don't eat that McDonald's burger? Because they have concern. Right? How, how can you, you know, go and indirectly even participate in a genocide? What kind of a human being are you? If you do that. Right? So that concern. These are my brothers and sisters. You see the pictures. You see the videos. If that doesn't move you, I don't know whether you have a heart or a stone. Right? This concern is number one. And number two, the same ayat they mentioned, to be free from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blame. Right? Allah doesn't like it. Huh? Allah doesn't like that attitude. He says that I don't, we don't, we don't want to be blamed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And number three, perhaps, right, quite possible that they may be guided. Right? We cannot decide. Right? Outcome is not in our hands. Right? Is there a guarantee that you know you'll say that okay, we do this, we get the result? No. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides. So how, how can we be so sure that no, this will not work? Uh, this is useless, waste of time, right? Who are we to decide that? So they're saying, very optimistic, they're saying, maybe, perhaps, they'll be guided. Perhaps the evil will be stopped. So three things, huh? First of all, concern. You should have concern. If you're a selfish fellow, uh, forget it. You know, you just exit Zoom and get out. You know, this session is useless. You cannot be selfish. You should have concern for people around you. Because we are believers, we are, you know, we believe in Akhra. So we cannot live like the other materialistic people. Right? So we should have concern. Number two, to be free from Allah Rabbul Alamin's blame. Because on the day of judgment, Allah will drag us. We cannot escape. I will not be able to escape. You will not be able to escape. Number three, perhaps the efforts that we put, perhaps, either now or later, right? They may bring results. They may give results. Perhaps the evil might be stopped. It's not in our hands. Right? So what is the mindset here? There that mindset is, it is of no use. That is the mindset, right? That group two. Group three, we must do our duty. This is the point. No matter what. Right? Whether it works, whether people listen, whether there is a change, whether it makes a difference, that's all secondary. What is my duty? My duty, Allah wants me to do this. I will do it. Finished. Right? For example, you know, you don't want to litter the road. Huh? You don't want to throw garbage. And in India, you know that you know, some streets are like, you know, they made roads in, in, in the middle of garbage. There are a lot of roads like that. If somebody argues like this, just because I don't put one paper, huh, will it make a difference? It may not make a difference. But does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want you to litter the road? Want you to spit on the road? Just because I don't spit, do you think nobody in India will spit? Yeah, people will continue to spit. But is it okay? Is it allowed for you to spit? Right? Will Allah be happy if you spit on the road? No. So don't do. It's your duty not to spit. Right? It's your duty if you see something uh, that is obstructing the road. You remove it. Right? We all know this. It's our duty. So we do the, we discharge our responsibility and duty no matter what. Okay? Now what are the practical implications? The people with this mindset, they will understand. That mindset, right? If I eat burger, what, what change? You know? That is the mindset, those people. If I vote, what is the big deal? If I don't vote, what is the big deal? One single vote, kya farak hai? that is their, their mindset. These people, if I don't act, I must face Allah's questioning and punishment. Remember Tabuk. You are supposed to do something you don't do. Definitely will be questioned. You know, you, know, you can give hundreds of excuses. You can convince everybody around you. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not going to work. Allah wants you to do something you have to do. There is absolutely no way around it. Okay? So, because Allah is going to question me, I will do what Allah wants me to do. And the number three, my efforts will never go for waste. Remember this. Outcome is not always decided based on dunya yardstick. 
right efforts will never go for waste right either in dunya we will see the results or in akhira we will see the results the good example a practical like when we saw from the sira right about tabuk for the group 2 we will see for group 3 we will see one uh, one hero whom we already discussed can anybody tell me in which sura did we discuss this person i did a complete session on this i used the same slide so that you know uh, probably you will be able to uh, sura yasin uh, no no sura yasin okay sura yasin the person comes he comes running, rushing to help the three messengers huh? against the people who are threatening to kill the messengers. They are saying, you know, the entire town has gathered against the three messengers. Imagine such wild people, such evil people. Huh? Allah sent three messengers. First to two, then he sent a third one. Imagine, I know it's very ajeeb. Huh? For a single community, single town, three messengers. Then imagine how bad they would have been. The entire community is against, the entire town is against these three messengers. And one person is coming all the way, running, rushing with a lot of urgency and is giving nasiha to his people. He's saying, you know, why don't you listen to the messengers? Huh? Then, you know, you know the, you, know, you read Surah Yasin, you'll get it. Now, what happened to this person? Now, I want you to look at it from the perspective, right? The uh, pathetic mindset that people have. With that kya farak padta hai mindset, you, you know, look at it, right? The entire town is against the messengers. One person, kya farak padta hai? <laughs> if he had thought like that, then, you know, we would not be discussing this. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recorded his deed. And I know we discussed that in, in detail in the Surah Yasin uh, session, right? I think co-host, if you can kindly find that uh, link and put it, maybe people can go and watch. The number of dialogues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used for the single person, Vis-a-vis -vis for the number of dialogues Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave for the three messengers. Amazing, ajeeb, double. For this person, whatever he spoke, Allah you know, mentioned double the amount what the three messengers spoke. Messengers, huh? Imagine. Subhanallah. So that is the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, right? In his last revelation, we don't even know his name. But Allah said, no, Allah said, you recite what he said and I will give you ajr, I will give you reward. Right? For every letter that he spoke, we are getting 10 rewards. Subhanallah. Uh, Allah liked it so much. Kya farak padta hai mindset? Gone. He, he didn't. He said, no, this is my duty. Whether the people accept, whether the people don't accept, whether my dawah will give result, who cares? I will do because Allah wants me to do. Now, what happened to this person? Did the people listen to him? Did people listen to him? No. Uh, what did they do? No. He was lynched. He was lynched. lynched. Yes, he was lynched. He was killed. Look at it. From the result perspective, if we ask this question, right, if we consider only the outcome, was the person in Surah Yasin successful? What do you think? Kya farak padta hai? Huh? Was he successful or no? He was successful. He was successful. Not, successful. He, was, he got killed, right? He got killed. Not in dunya. No, in akhira. Mm. Yeah, Akhira. In Akhira, hmm. in Akhira, he will be rewarded. Right. Akhira, now we are not making an assumption here, right? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that he was successful in Surah Yasin? Yes. yes. Huh. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Kilo the Khulil Janna. Allah said, go, enter into Janna immediately. Yeah? Subhanallah. And then he continues, right? My people do not know that, you know, you have forgiven me, you have honored me. Subhanallah. So it's success. Now, I want you to know, I have underlined that, uh, highlighted this outcome. I want you to remember this, right? We'll come back to it in a moment. This outcome is extremely important because this outcome is what is differentiating group two and group three. The silent spectators also looking at the outcome. The group three who are trying to stop evil, they are also looking at outcome. Same outcome only. But the perspective and the attitude towards that outcome is different. Okay, so let's focus on that. See, if you look at the Sabbath, that right, there are two people, right? One is silent spectator, the group two, <clears throat> and those who try to stop the evil, group three. Now, if you look at it, they are both living in the same town, <clears throat> same environment, same situation. They both receive the same guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but completely different attitude. I want you to think here. Right? They both same town, same situation, same environment. They are not living in different times. Same environment. Right? They might have been neighbors also. 
guidance also same both understand the guidance same guidance but huge difference one group decides that they will not do anything they will be silent spectators another group they decide that no matter what we will go and we will try our best to stop the evil so what is this difference what is bringing this difference the difference is the mindset either you have a materialistic mindset or you have a taqwa mindset and we all fasted right mashallah why did we fast we will all proudly say ah we want to become a people of taqwa uh, we will we will soon see you know where we are in terms of taqwa the materialistic mindset it will measure everything based on worldly outcome materialism that's what materialism is right worldly outcome everything is profit and loss only pnl statement everything right if it benefits some you know, us in dunya we will do if it doesn't benefit us in dunya we will not do this is materialism simple right am i correct or not am i correct or not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, correct i agree but sometime uh, you know people have uh, a spiritual taqwa but they don't uh, you know go one step further i mean they are good only but they don't take the direction some reason okay i, I didn't understand so they have good intention right the uh, people of tabuk the three sahaba they had good intention did allah forgive them directly uh, no why yeah that was the call of uh, the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's like a different plane altogether it's going against the quran maybe okay so forbidding evil is a call from allah subhanahu wa taala and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam or no yeah brother i agree but it's not uh, like between uh, mud and water i mean when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says something it becomes there remains no doubt at all you know what i mean like but i am not saying uh, any uh, thing is wrong i am just saying people are confused sometimes no no i'm simple question okay forbidding evil is it an explicit command in the quran and sunna yes or no yes yes do yes, you want yes, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to come here and personally tell us is no. there a difference no right for example will you eat with your left hand knowingly no why no brother why I'm asking because, why. Uh, is, uh, we got habit to eat with the right hand. Sorry. Uh, we got habit to eat with right hand. No, but so some some people sir. are lefties. Is it okay for them to eat? No. No, brother. I'm asking why. Uh, it's a sunna to eat from the right hand. It's not sunna. It's a there's a punishment. <laughs> you are you're, you're the proper salah. Oh, the four right. bedas, right? <laughs> there's no choice here. He said, "Don't eat." Shaitan eats with the left hand. You don't eat and drink with uh, left hand. So it's not choice. There is a command here that you have to stay away from it. So my point is right. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not come and personally sit next to us and tell us right. Please don't eat right. We read the hadith. Same hadith is also same. One Rahman ko munkar falu yoga yero bi yadi hi. When whoever sees evil among you, let them stop with it with your hand. If it is not possible, then let them stop it with their mouth or tongue. Right. If that is also not possible, let them cheat, uh, at least hate it in their heart. That is the that is the last. It's a if condition. If it is not possible, if it is not possible, it's like a flow chart. And he said, "Dalik abu afal iman." This is the weakest form of faith, which is very hating. That is only if it is not possible. If somebody says that my intentions are very nice, but I don't want to do, I mean, this doesn't cut it. Unfortunately, right? We can convince ourselves that it's okay. What intention are we talking about? Can the person who is drinking and eating with the left hand can he say that my intentions are nice? But you know what? Uh, my intentions are nice, but I am not praying. my intentions are nice but i will not wash after using the washroom you get punished in the grave there is nothing like you know the good intention right you have to make your effort despite making effort you fail that's a different matter but intention i have good intention and by the way don't differentiate huh? then you know you have to be consistent right if you are taking eating with left hand so seriously then you must take forbidding you will also seriously eating with left hand comes only in the hadith forbidding you will comes in the quran and the sunna extremely powerful and several places right so and i clear cut yes. commands the commands are commands period right so it's a, when you say call of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is also call of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so we don't expect him to come because he's not alive right he's not you know you don't expect him to come here and sit you know go to everybody's house and say na please come right that, that sister you know in the earlier discussion she uh, recited the ayah in first ayat of surah hujrat 
says, Ya Ayyul Ladhin Amunu, right? Amunu is still the day of judgment. The call of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very clear. It's explicit. Right? And we have to answer the call. If you don't, then I'm saying it's your choice. It's my choice. But we will have to face the consequences. Okay? So, materialism, undoubtedly, people take a call based on the worldly outcome. And even for this, right? People, why don't they do? They're saying confused. They're not confused in looking for a good job. They're not confused in looking for a spacious house. They're not confused in looking for a great car. That is all perfect. They're not confused in putting their kids in a good school. What's my confusion? Right? MashaAllah, they'll put you know, all efforts, ask these people, that people. Right? But when it comes to the matters of the deen, when it comes to doing some sacrifice, when it you know, comes to spending some money, when it comes to spending some effort, when it comes to spending some time, ah, then you know, people become confused. Uh, they don't know what to do. Uh, they you know, they'll find the n number of things. Unless materialistic we... love, brother. Materialistic love. I completely agree. Right. Because there is one more of these uh, where uh, Prophet Sallallahu said, no, when uh, son of Adam is given a heap of gold of a, what you call a heel, he will not be satisfied. He will ask again more. That right. that is the main. Right. That is the main. We we are really very very specific when we come to sacrifice. I completely agree. Right. So the point here is, unless we accept where we stand, right, we will never change. We keep on uh, giving excuses. We keep on uh, telling ourselves, right? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, all is well, all is well. Huh? Uh, you know, uh, Doesn't I mean, want to leave the desires. The desires are so heavy, so powerful that they don't want, don't want to leave the desires. Apne nafs ko kush karna sabse zyada Haan. important samasthe, huh? Yes, and that actually leads to selfishness. The same people, they will start acting like anything when they are directly affected. This is what I'm trying to tell you, right? I gave that burger example, right? If his own relatives, if his kids, if his parents, they are getting killed, right? And McDonald's is sponsoring that murder. Do you think this same fellow who said that, you know, kya farak hai? will you go and eat the burger? We can use the same thing, right? You, you don't eat the burger. Do you think you know uh, your parents will not get killed? They will anyways will get killed. Your kids are going to get killed. Well, one burger, what difference? Right? There, oh. But here they are not directly affected, right? Some brother, some sister, somebody's kid staying somewhere thousands of kilometers away. This is selfishness. For this selfishness alone, they will be punished, inshallah. You will see that. Such shameless people. The Zionist, right, Mark Zuckerberg, and we saw that WhatsApp, that founder, right, how much money they are donating. They are sitting somewhere, right? Look at their uh, concern for their mission and look at us. Look where we are. Right? So these people, the same thing, right? Even in India, something that directly affects them, some law is passed. Maad Allah, may Allah protect. These people will be on the street. Haj kam karenge to nahi. Full excuse. And when everything, you know, become worse, and worse, then they will, you know, oh, full Twitter, uh, that this, you know, you know, doing some activism in Twitter. What is the use? Today, when you are supposed to do something, you have to do When everything is gone, right? Pura haat me chhod diya. Right? Everything went beyond your control. Now, you know, you come and, you know, you jump and you say, no, full WhatsApp group may active. They will become very active. Right, and you send messages. You see, you know, several groups were formed in 2020. You know, many people know this. Well, where are those people? They went to sleeping. Again, something has to come, then they will wake up suddenly. So this is selfishness. This is nothing. There is no other explanation to this, right? When it directly affects them, this will come. Even then, there are some you know, super duper people. They know that you know, they will immediately start looking for country. Can I go to Canada? Can I go to Australia? Can I go to US? Can I go to London? Uh, Hijra. We have a name for that, Hijra. Right? That is super duper. Huh? Only, only, only worried about our thing. Right? My family, right? comfort. I mean, this, this is reality. There are, there are two things I completely agree, brother. Majority, like, I, 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 I am not remembering the ayah, Allah Ta'ala has said, I think it's a sual, uh, surat al-asr. My time, Allah, Allah has given challenge of the time, no? Because definitely those people are lost. He gave the four reasons. Particularly, it, it, it is definite, brother, because uh, what happens uh, when it comes to sacrifice, there is no consistency. That is very important. There is something emergency, then only people will get that continuity is not there with the sacrifice and continuously facing the test and getting the blessings of Allah. That, that is not seen now in the current fitna. I completely agree. 
circle of hair. Okay, so this is we see this problem, right? So what about people with taqwa mindset? They measure everything based on outcome and akhra. This is also measurement. Here also people are concerned about the outcome, but the materialistic people worldly outcome. The people with taqwa mindset, the outcome is in akhra, right? What does Allah want from us? Take the person of Surah Yasin. If it has worldly outcome, you should not have opened his mouth. Now, I want you know, everybody here, including me, you put ourselves in that position of that person in Surah Yasin. Do, will we have the guts? Will we have the courage to go and challenge the people who threatened to kill the messengers? Will, will we have the guts? I'm asking myself, will I have the guts? Or will I be sitting somewhere inside the house? You know, uh -huh, uh, door band karke, you know, We'll see through the kidki, right? You know what's happening. Huh? What are going to pro you know, today it's a phone, you know, we have the phone, uh, mobile phone, we'll take one video also. What are they trying to do to the messengers? Will we do that? How many of us will have the himmat, will have the courage to go and you know uh, tell tell the people? Ask us, and people will say it's very easy to say, No, 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 I will have courage. We will see what courage we have. Right? You see that, right? But person with taqwa, they will not. Keep quiet. Right? So this is the person of Surah Yasin. He's a role model for us. So he measured, right? He also did the measurement of the outcome. He did not measure the worldly outcome. He knew that when they're threatening uh, the messengers, do you think they're going to spare him? No. He knew that, you know, he's going to he deliberately, you know, he, he went there and, he, you know, he put himself literally, you know, saying that, please kill me. The death sentence, and they killed him because they're threatening the messengers, right? They said, you know, we'll stone you to death and he will punish you like anything. Right? They, they, they're threatening such very evil and violent people. So he knew that he's going to get lynched. And he did get lynched. But he didn't care. He did not worry about the worldly outcome. He was worried about what Allah wants. Because the entire, his bayan, right, his sermon, his lecture, his nasiha, his advice to the people, he speaks about his understanding of Allah. Wa he knew that, you know, all my sacrifice here, even if they kill me, it doesn't matter. Allah will be pleased. And what did Allah do? SubhanAllah. Not pleased. He honored him. And today, you know, we are speaking about him after several thousand years. And inshallah, may Allah give us a tawfiq to meet him on the day of judgment and be with him in Jannah. So, Amin, Rabbul Alameen. Inshallah. Right? I mean, these are the people I want to see, right? right? This should be our aim. Okay? This is what you know, Allah wants from us. So, after all this, right? This is the point. This week, I think in Bangalore, right? And, you know, in other parts, right? And then it, it, it started. Oat. This is your duty, right? And if you have any questions, you ask me. You know, whatever, fickle question, any question you ask me. You challenge me and I will give you answers, inshallah. And I will ask you questions, you have to give me answer also. It's all one way only, right? People say this and that. When you ask questions, the answer doesn't come, right? <laughs> that should not be the case, right? So you have a job to do. And you have to do it. And don't tell me, you know, because of one word, kya farak padta hai, because I do. Don't, again, it's the same problem, right? Don't act like group two, right? Then you know, right? We, we we went through the incident of Tabuk. It doesn't matter whether you know there is an you know impact on the outcome, whether there is no impact on the, it's not in our hands. It is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. My job is to do what I'm supposed to do. Right? And if you leave this opportunity for next five years, you're gone. And you know, Ma'ad Allah, Ma'ad Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and keep us all safe. Even if you're alive, you may not get an opportunity to vote again. I'm telling you. Right? It's damn serious. Even if you're alive, even if you live in this country, you may not, I'm not saying you will not, I'm saying you may not get an, another opportunity to vote. Right? So do that. Right? Take it seriously. Right? And you'll only, you have to spend like what, 20 minutes? And it's a government declared holiday as well. There's absolutely no excuse. Right? You can't spend 20, 10 to 15 minutes to do something, such a simple thing. Right, so please make brother, sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Like can there, we, are, there are a lot of uh, discussion. We, on brother, brother, yeah, I understand, brother. That's why I already mentioned. Right, you ask me in question and answer session. Okay, I'll inshallah answer. Okay, okay. You see that, right? So make make it a point that you do your duty. Okay. Now, there are consequences when we do not prevent evil, and this is a very well known hadith. When people see the wrongdoer and they do not stop him from doing wrong then soon Allah will envelop everybody with the punishment from him. 
right i don't want to be a reason why allah punishes everybody imagine that what a shame huh? because you know that this is a clear cut blatant evil you know anybody who you know who has got a sane mind the writing is on the wall unless you are i don't know you know you are living in planet mars or something like that or something is terribly wrong with your mind right nobody can deny that this is blatant evil they are out to get you so so clear and you see it when i say see it's not about reading you literally see with your own eyes what they are trying to do what they are speaking what they have been doing right you are seeing it and even after that you are not making any effort to do your little bit your two cents as they say then what do you expect this is a very serious warning and then the brother said right and the call of sallallahu this is the call of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a command direct command what excuse do we have and people they don't know don't know let them leave them alone you and me know now right what are you going to do that's the point now i know this hadith you know this hadith what are you going to do what am i going to do you see how serious it is allah will envelop them with the punishment from him no. it's a specific punishment not some random thing right so serious okay so cast your vote do what is correct why because allah commands you to forbid evil and this is definitely one of the important ways you can forbid evil because you will not get this another opportunity and remember you will be questioned by allah subhanahu wa taala you got an opportunity today you have an opportunity to do something to play a part in stopping this evil force are you doing it and ask yourselves will allah want me to do this and you know their plans right i mean that's what i'm saying i know i don't want to repeat and state the obvious so if in this situation if i go and do my part in stopping this evil my two cents will allah be happy if i give excuse if i sleep if i say i'm tired if i say i'm going to my marriage there i'm going here i'm going there my you know car break down my bike break down huh? my leg is hurting my head is hurting the same excuse right like how the hypocrites give excuse when the, when the opportunity comes where they have to perform they will not perform this is what the hypocrites did full excuse but they were in the front row in the sala <laughs> what is the use <laughs> huh? so do what allah wants you to do right and stopping evil is such a such a very important thing and look at this in this ayat this again about bani israel right in surah maida they did not stop each other from doing evil this is very important so it's not just about me being good here me you know stopping uh, doing evil it's about stopping each other right so it, you know there is a teamwork here so it is not because this is a, this is the faith that is based on community that is why there is jamaat in the in sala right why do you need to have jamaat i have to pray to allah subhanahu wa taala i'll pray alone no you have to pray in jamaat because the sense of community should be there we are one umma that sense of community is, is inbuilt right it should be imbibed right allah subhanahu wa taala stresses it again and again and again in the materialistic mindset right it's completely different it's all about individualism you only care about yourself and your you know whomever you love that's it you give a damn about the neighbor you give a damn about the person who is living in, in, down the street that is materialism this is islam right we think as a community the concern for the community will be one of our foremost things in our life so we have to stop each other and allah subhanahu wa taala look at it how he reprimands they did not stop each other and said surely what they did is evil right not preventing evil is an evil thing that's the whole point here and this is a command from allah subhanahu wa taala after this what excuse do we have so what is required of you is not just you go and vote you should actively spread awareness the next few days the last minute push there will be a lot of people who are you know like the cat on the wall right they may not go and vote or they may not have made a proper decision somebody will go and put in for nota and they will come back and they will be very very proud i put for nota or that you got a slept in the house only what is the use right there are people like that the people get confused so this is last few days take it as a very serious thing and do it for the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala 
right actively spread awareness right talk to people right use your whatsapp contacts properly use your whatsapp groups properly share content encourage people if you have a neighbor ask them are you going you know take them take them in your car take them in your bike tell them you come with me let's go together all right you do that put that effort encourage others this is extremely important my dear brothers and sisters and look at this quote the world suffers a lot not because of the violence of bad people but because of the silence of good people today you have an opportunity to do something you fail to do it and you fail to encourage others to do it right and remember we will all suffer and remember your kids will pay for your silence again maadallah may allah subhanahu wa taala protect the situation is very serious right i'm not going to Uh, repeated over and over or explain or elaborate i'm i'm sure that we all know if you don't act today your kids will pay for your silence okay so may allah subhanahu wa taala make it easy for all of us to discharge what is expected of us from him and may allah subhanahu wa taala give baraka in all the little efforts that we make to please him and may allah subhanahu wa taala grant us victory ameen ya rabbal alamin